Welcome back. Uh, thank you for responding with all of your questions. We hope that you've been out doing your observation challenges this week and you've had a chance to get out in the natural world. You guys had so many questions that uh, we wanted to do a follow-up video to answer some of your questions and then we're going to use some of them to inform our next videos. So uh, one of the questions you had was about us and who we are. So the outdoor education instructors that you're seeing, we're teachers just like your teachers and we come from all sorts of different backgrounds but we have one thing in common. We really love teaching students in the natural world. When it's not a pandemic, students would come to the Bill Mason Center or McSkimming and they would participate in a program with their class that has something to do with what you're learning in your classroom that has to do with science sometimes with history or maybe even some leadership or outdoor skills. So you would come and spend the whole day with us in the forest learning. And so because we can't be with you, we decided to send uh, out some videos so that you guys could be out in the natural world exploring uh, and learning about what's in your neighborhood. Hi friends, Christine here out at McSkimming Outdoor Education Center with one of our other trail cams. You had so many curious questions about why we use trail cams and I thought maybe I would take a moment to show you one that we have here and answer some of those questions. The trail cameras are camouflaged, which means they're made to kind of blend into their surroundings, except for the fact that we've put this one out in the middle of a field. The reason this one's out in the middle of the field is because we've noticed a lot of tracks in the snow in this area and we're trying to catch those animals on the camera. Now, you asked a little bit about how these cameras work. They're actually motion censored. So as soon as something walks across the front of the camera, it triggers the camera inside to start recording. We can set it for either 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, and the camera will keep recording anything that's inside the frame during that timeline. You had asked a few questions about the animals and how they interact with this camera. Now, one time we saw a fox come right up close and almost nose it. We think it's because they can see a little bit of the red light that allows us to see the animals or illuminates the animals on the camera during night vision. That also causes reflections in some of the animal's eyes sometimes, which almost makes them look white and like they're glowing. Kind of a little freaky sometimes, but really cool still. One of your questions was, why do we film at night? Because these cameras are out all the time, it can capture animals that move around at night. Have you heard of the word nocturnal? What do you think it means? Awake at night, that's right. There's animals that are awake and moving more at nighttime and rest more during the day. Do you know what animals that move more during the day and sleep at night, like you and I are called? The word is diurnal. Is that a new word for you? Awesome. Some of you wanted to know why these can stay out in the cold so long and, and how long do they last? Well, they're actually battery operated and there's probably some insulation inside that helps protect everything. It's a pretty hard case as well. So it protects it from anything that might knock against it, like the Fox video when it kind of nudged it. Now, someone wanted to know why they didn't eat the camera. I don't know about you, but that doesn't look very appetizing to me. It doesn't really look or smell like food, so the animals aren't too concerned with it. But sometimes they do get curious and sniff, and we wonder if maybe the, the sound of the camera coming on or the light inside startles some of the animals, like this clip. Just take a minute and watch it. I am back at our site where last week we put up the field camera. Uh, let's take a look and see what was caught on camera.
your excitement and passion for the outdoors has really fueled ours again inside. We really do miss having you out at the outdoor education centers experiencing this with us firsthand. We have three more modules that we are going to cover. We are currently working on one uh, that is being filmed on the adaptations uh, and strategies that animals use and all living things use to survive here in Ottawa in winter. Uh, the next module will be focused all on tracking and how we find animals out in the forest and maybe why we would be interested in finding animals in the forest here at the Bill Mason Centre or at McSkimming Outdoor Education Centre and how those skills are useful to you. And our last module that we will we'll be talking about will be birds in winter. Um, and I have some chickadees here just flying around uh, and we're excited to bring those birds to you in the coming weeks. I hope that answered some of your questions. You know, as Lindsay mentioned, we're gonna be addressing many, many more of them in the upcoming weeks. I did want to mention too that many of the students that have responded to us have been doing some great work out there. I'd really like to take a moment to share some student work with you. Uh, Dana and Chelsea, uh, grade six students at Pleasant Park, shared these journal entries with us and I, I just thought that it was really a good example of what can be done when you invest some time in it and, and get out there and make these observations so you can see what you could strive for. And remember, this is the way that we all started. All of us here uh, started by just taking an interest in something in the natural world and pursuing that interest, asking questions, searching for answers, recording our observations and what we discovered. And over time, it just, it sticks, right? Because it, it has meaning to us. So I hope you're able to find meaning in the explorations that, that you're undertaking in your neighborhood. Our plan is to keep doing this for the remainder of the school year, so every two weeks we'll have something new coming out that relates to what's happening in the natural world and ideas for you to get out and explore and, and interact with it. Now, I also want to encourage you, if you have questions, please remember that you're quite capable of researching solutions too. There's many ways to do that. There, there are many resources that you can use. You can take advantage of our local libraries. Uh, the internet is full of good resources. And if you're uncomfortable doing that research, ask someone to give you a hand. You can always learn together with family and friends. If you find that you're developing a great interest in this and you're getting out and, and producing things that you would like to share, please let your teacher know. They can send it off to us and would love to feature more student work in the future. So hope to see you here next week. Until then, take care, be well.